What does it matter? It's what you want, isn't it? Don't put this all on me. And we agreed. We said we'd wait until he was more settled. Wait for what? Jonah. Hey, love. Uh, I wasn't expecting you home. You didn't answer me. We were just saying we shouldn't bombard you with questions about uni. It's going fine, like I already told you. Oh, no, no, that's great. You were arguing? Oh, I wouldn't really call it an argument. You two never argue. Thirsty? Why are you acting all weird? What's this? Nothing. Why do you need an estate agent? We were just sounding things out. <laughs> but you never sell this house. We love this place. And you encouraged me to pick Leatherbridge Uni so I was close to home. Sit down, love. <laughs> now you're really freaking me out. We were gonna wait. Uh, find the right moment. Your mum and I are separating. Oh! Morning, Emma. Oh, oh. Morning. I don't know about you, but I could not stop thinking about poor Daniel last night. Daniel? Yeah, how he's coping. And Zara, of course. OK, back up a minute. What do you mean, coping? Oh, you haven't heard. Oh, so yesterday, the police turned up here, all guns blazing. Not literally, oh. but they did take Daniel away. What took him where? Well, nobody knows. That's the point. It's all very cloak and dagger. Apparently, they picked up Zara at the same time, and little Joe. Oh, that sounds like they've been taken into protective custody. Oh. I have been so worried I didn't get a wink of sleep. I had this dreadful dream about being stuck somewhere creepy, like one of those motels at the end of the world. Like in that film. The sparkling. The shining. Mm. Anyway, try as I might, I could not get out. And then I started to have this feeling, this fear in the pit of my stomach. What if what's out there is worse? What, worse than what Daniel and Zara are going through? Really, Valerie? It's a hair. So? Not that kind of hair, Daniel. And the smell, it's not even clean. Hey. Good morning, darling. That's my favourite boy. Did you sleep well? Oh, dear. Why are we here, Mummy? Yes, Mummy. Why don't you explain? We're trying to stop some bad people. Not scary people. And just in case, the police are taking extra special care of us. And they're keeping us here in this lovely hotel. Keeping us safe? Yes. Yes. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. I'm so sorry. When? When did you decide? It's hard to put an actual date. Your mum suggested of marriage counselling. You might say that brought things to a head. You've been for counselling? Fat lot of good it did us. <laughs> this is mad. I mean, you two love each other, don't you? Don't you? I wish it were that simple. <laughs> you can't do this. None of it changes how we feel about you. Oh, is that supposed to make me feel better? Lord. Get off me! Going. Anywhere I can try and forget this ever happened. We will have to rearrange some of their patients. Oh, uh, Dr. Heskey will thank you for gracing us with your presence. You're welcome, Mrs. Tambay. You are going to have to take on some of Dr. Granger and Dr. Carmichael's patients. Well, well, why? So, so they can go off on holiday again? No. Uh, they have been taken into protective custody. Speaking of which, is there any word from the police? Um, I'm hoping to hear from them today, but I am going to need your complete discretion. What? Do I have to spell it out? I know you're angry about yesterday, and rightly so. Taking Joe from school, terrifying him again, unforgivable, and then 20 minutes for us to pack? Oh, shush. Don't you shush me. It's bad enough for him, without him having to hear us. Look, I'm sure that once we've spoken to Rob or Tom Stanton, you'll be able to find out what's happening and what's going on. Yeah, whatever they say. I'm not spending another night here. Yeah, me neither. It's not exactly five star. Okay, look, why don't I get some breakfast then? 
can have it in our PJs. Joe will find it great fun. What? It's not working. Oh, well. <laughs> Come in. Mrs. Taylor's test results are now on the system. Oh, great, thanks. I can't stop thinking about that dream. What if it's trying to tell me something? Like what? Go on. Psychoanalyze me. Well, all right. Um, maybe it's telling you that you should look outward, you know, see the bigger picture. Which is? That it's not about you. You are not the one stuck in some safe house, are you? No. Have you lost something? My keys. I've got a meeting at St Phil's in bed. Oh. I always have a routine with mine. They always go straight to my handbag when I get to work, and when I'm at home, they live in a little hook. Right. The secret is not to deviate or get distracted until they're where they should be. I'll bear that in mind. Mother! Where are you? Uh, I'm at work. What are you doing there? Working. It's Wednesday, don't you remember? You're supposed to be here having your Christmas meal. Right. Um, uh, th th that would be the same Christmas meal we had last Friday. That one. You know, the, the one where you burnt the turkey and we told each other all those awful cracker jokes. You do remember, right? Yes, of course. What a fool. Mum. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't sleep very well, that's all. I, I lost track. Hey, is everything all right? You know me. I forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. Yeah. Oh, you had me worried for a sec. Better crack on, packing to do. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, how are preparations going for your, your great Nordic expedition? Ooh, when you're there, you have to try the Schmelachov. The what? Basically, it's, it's a sheep's head, right? They, they kind of take a blowtorch to the skin, they remove the brain, and then they salt it and they dry it. A moustache. Oh, but it, it's got to be... A lamb's head, not a sheep's head, because if you do, then, well, you'll be getting scrapey, scrapey on top of neurovirus, and that's not nice. Bye, dear. Bye-bye. So, tell me what happened again. Fell down some stairs, banged my arm. Mm hmm And you, you didn't bang your head? No. So, what are you, what are you doing at the moment? I'm at uni here doing classics. Ah, Homer and Virgil, you lucky man. <laughs> first year? Yeah. Can all be a little bit difficult at first, can't it? Everything's cool. Thing is, Jonah, I can smell alcohol on your breath. Well, I mean, I had a couple of beers at the Union. Before you give me a lecture, all I've had this month is two lagers on the 3rd. Well, two and a half ciders at my mate Elliot's birthday on the 11th. Oh, and uh, last Wednesday, I was going to go to the Union bar, but the Uni show choir was in there. It's just a bit early in the day. Is there something bothering you? <sighs> Nothing you can fix, Dr. Carter. Although, you've done a good job in the past. First time I saw you, I was nine. October 16th, 2008. Coincidentally, my first day here. Oh. I stuck a rubber up my nose for a dare at school. You got it out with some tweezers, which was pretty impressive. Then you dispensed some appropriate advice. It's not a good idea to put anything in your nose, as noses are for breathing. And I still stand by that. <gasps> that, uh, green-spotted tie you had on. Never seen you wear it again. I'd forgotten all about it. I, I think I lost it at the... Dry cleaners. Of course, 9th of July 2010, it was a red bow tie. Matched the cut on my knee from doing a wheelie. You patched me up, then gave me a Darth Vader sticker. Oh, and a tetanus, which hurt. Do you remember every time you've seen me? May 16th, 2012, I had a sore throat, but Mum was convinced I had glandular fever. March 5th, 2013, I got food poisoning from that takeaway. Saw Dr. Claire, I think, because you weren't here. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Then you cut a bit of a lucky break. Until the 1st of April 2015. Ingrowing toenail. <laughs> More fool me. I've never met anyone with such an amazing memory. How'd you do it? It's just how my brain works. 
So what else can you remember? Uh, what the day was like, the weather, what I did at school, ate for lunch, pretty much everything. Hmm. Well, remember not to do that again. Or something. No, they're in here somewhere. What? Clean underwear. Talk about forgetting the essentials. You could try turning them inside out. Or better still, you could go commando. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm going to go and buy some. What? Wait, no way! Who's going to stop me? Daniel! It's very unusual, actually. I've never met anybody who's got... Yes! I'm so sorry to bother you. Um, I've got Jonah's parents here. We'll be a couple of minutes. Okay. Jonah? Uh, sorry, Karen, they can come in. What are you doing here? We've been looking for you everywhere. Are you OK? What, physically or, or mentally? Jonah's hurt his arm. I've patched him up. He shouldn't need any stitches. Oh, thank you. We've been having a very interesting chat. What about? He has a remarkable memory. Clearly, I've missed some things. Well, he's always been like that. No, 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 it's quite exceptional. Well, he's a very bright lad. Are, are you all done? Well, he's more than a bright lad. I know how busy you doctors are. We don't want to take up any more of your time. Let's get you home. Be good to have a proper talk. What more can you say? Is everything OK? Yes. Please, love. Come back and see me if it doesn't heal properly. some fills today. Yes, well, I was supposed to be, but my meeting was cancelled. Just after my taxi arrived, so that was helpful. Mm. Why, don't you, why don't you just drive there? Because I've mislaid my car keys, and it is driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that things are usually in the most unexpected place. Do they? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I have had it up to here with good advice. Anyway, it's perfectly normal for people to mislay things. It happens all the time. Yeah. Memory's a funny thing. My mum forgot that we had Christmas dinner last week. Really? Yeah. She called me, asked me where I was. Have you spoken to her about it? I tried. She's still grieving. And grief does strange things to people. Yeah, it does. Um, you should check your pockets for holes. Thank you. August 12th, 2002, first camping holiday. I drew this, sitting in the sun. It rained at two, tipped it down for the next three days, so we all snuggled up in the tent and played card games like Snap and Go Fish. Dad told stupid jokes. Even then, I thought they were terrible. You two couldn't stop laughing, though. Yeah. Your birthday, October 18th, 2003. Dad made that chocolate cake, the one that tasted funny, because he'd mixed up the baking soda and powder. Following year 2004 was the best, though. He filled the room with all these balloons. There were, like, 15 blue ones, 21 red. Took me hours. I had to take the day off work. It was worth it, though. you hidden these little presents under them. No, most of it was just stupid stuff. Yeah, but you got Mum this beautiful necklace and earrings. Still have them. Then you let me go mad and pop all the balloons. Summer 2005, Western Supermare. I loved that place. You two walked along the beach holding hands whilst I built a big sandcastle. Next day, though, the Wednesday, you weren't feeling well, so Dad and I drove up to Kilve Beach. The, the one with all the rock pools? I counted 227 limpets in just one pool. <laughs> then we found this fish, proper fish, edible kind. I was so excited, but it was so slippery. Dad caught it, and I remember being really impressed. You couldn't believe it when we got home. Told you the story. 
You see? You guys have fun together. You do nice stuff for each other. That'll be the estate agent. What should we do? Um, it's OK. I'll, 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 I'll talk to them. Uh-huh. You got a minute? Uh-huh. If you're here, uh, who's at the campus? Sid's taking over. I've got something right up your street. Mm, have you now? Yeah, young man came to see me, patient, who can remember every detail of his life. A didactic memory? No, it's like he's got a database of everything he's experienced. Now, if I'm right, it's incredibly rare. Have you ever heard of hypothymesia? Yeah, of course I have. You have? Mate, I, I spent pretty much the entirety of my teenage years watching reruns of Taxi. In a way, she's kind of my one and only true love. Sorry? Mary Lou Henner, the actress. She has it. Really? Oh, it, it is fascinating. Now, no one really knows what causes it. There is this theory that it's caused by an enlarged temporal lobe. But another one, that they are unable to inhibit memories like the rest of us. Well, whatever it is, it's an extraordinary gift. And quite a curse. Where have you been? Why haven't you returned any of my calls? How long are we going to be stuck in here? You're perfectly free to leave the room, just not the hotel. <sighs> I would have got here sooner, but the situation suddenly escalated and I was no longer confident we could protect you effectively at home. Why? What's happened? We've lost our other witness. Lost them? How? She was attacked in prison. What are you saying? Is she dead? She's injured. We don't know her badly yet. OK, that's it. This is, this is way too dangerous. Don't do anything hasty. Look, you're telling me that you can't protect a, a witness, that not even prison is safe against this gang? Which is exactly why we brought you here. And what, we're supposed to be grateful, are we? All I care about is keeping the three of you safe. So until the trial, I've got a team of officers who'll be watching you round the clock 24-7. What about my daughter? Is, uh, is she in any danger? I'll talk to Nottinghamshire Police. I'm sorry, but anything more than that is too great a risk. Any calls you make, any emails, your whereabouts must remain a secret. Which will be where exactly? Because this place is obviously temporary, right? I'm advising you not to leave this building under any circumstances. Dad, I thought you told them we're not selling. Hello. Welcome. Sorry to drop by unannounced. Is something wrong? No, 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 quite the contrary. Is this a bad time? No, no, no. Please, come in. We're pulling out every resource, everything we've got on this one. My son's in there. Can you promise me that he's safe? You see, he has no idea what he's asking. Look, you know what, if we do make it out of this alive, which I'm starting to doubt, what about everything else? You know, this is our busiest time of the year. We have a practice to run. I will speak to Mrs Tembe and Jimmy. I know they'll understand. Jimmy's on holiday. And what about Joe? What's going to happen to him? He's, he's going to miss loads of school, the run-up to Christmas. Which one of us is going to break that to him? OK, pull out. Tell him you're not testifying. Daniel! Even if Zara was to do that, it's best we hold you here for your own safety. Oh, hold people against their will, is that it? protecting them, no matter how large their pride or ego. Oh, so we're living in a police state now. Is that what you're telling me? I've done some research, but I can't say anything official until we get you tested. Tested? Yeah, I think Jonah has something that we call hypothymesia. What is that? Well, you, you must have noticed he has an extraordinary memory and he can recall all sorts of details. We just thought that was Jonah being Jonah. We've never really made a big deal of it. I had no idea it was an actual condition. Oh, it's incredibly rare. In fact, only a very few people in the world have it. Wow. Well, who'd have thought our son was a genius? I'm not a genius. And it can be a total pain when your mind's playing out 2008 at the same time you're in the present. But I guess it has its uses. Like today, when I convinced my parents not to split up and sell this house. Right. I reminded them of all the good times. 
all the reasons they should stay together. I think I'm intruding, aren't I? We've had better days. Stay. It's fine now. How is he? He's fallen asleep. Hopefully he missed you both arguing. Look, I know it's not what we wanted to hear, but we're just going to have to accept that this is what's happening and try to live with it. And there are some positives. We can spend some family time together with no distractions. We could watch a movie. We could do all our Christmas shopping online. We could even get some decorations and make it look special for Joe. What do you think? Maybe what you remember wasn't the whole story. What do you mean? Well, times you weren't there, things you didn't see. What are you saying, that you guys have hidden things from me? Why would you do that? Because we knew you'd remember everything. We wanted your memories to be good ones. <laughs> so you cut out all the bad things, is that it? That's crazy. Remember that camping trip? We got home, you went to sleep. All the camping equipment was soaked through. Your dad threw it all away, tent and everything. We spent most of the night arguing. That's right. And all those birthdays of mine, the ones your dad made special, last year... He got you that jumper, blue with the little red cuffs. I bought it. Wrapped it up so you'd think it was from your dad. You'd never forget her birthday. I was busy at work, you know. Too busy to remember? And what about Western Supermera? Next, you're going to tell me that wasn't a great holiday. No, 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 mostly it was. But your mother, she wasn't sick. We'd been arguing all the night before, and that's why she didn't come to the rock pools. So everything's a lie, is that it? All those memories, none of it was real? Please don't say that. Maybe we didn't do the right thing. I don't know, but we just wanted what was best for you. I never asked you to put me first. We wanted to make you happy. Is that so terrible? Well, you're making me unhappy now. I know, and I am sorry. But we can't be together anymore. Why? Help me understand. We've tried, trust me. But then you realise you're only going to keep hurting one another if you stay together. So that's it? There's no way to change your mind? Sorry, love. <laughs> I'll speak to him. Not the ignition. Always the most unlikely place. I can't believe that they were there all along. What a stupid dream. You're dreaming about Valerie again? I know, it was just her nonsense that distracted me in the first place. I'll give her the shining. Ooh, Stanley Kubrick, 1980s, cracker. Where are you going? Um, I'm off to see Mother. Oh. Four hour drive. Massive overreaction on my part. Oh, well, after the day I've had, I'd hate to think anyone else was losing their marbles. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Look, I'm sure she'll appreciate some TLC. No. Thanks, sir. See you later. I just want it to be how it was. I'd come home, Mum would put the kettle on, Dad would start droning on about the football scores, even though I hate football. We all wish we could preserve certain moments in time. <laughs> Well, today's going to be etched on my brain for the rest of my life, isn't it? It's one bad memory my parents couldn't save me from. No, but they agonised about it before telling you. They love you very much. I guess. We can't always have happy memories. The bad ones are there to help you appreciate the good stuff. That's one way to look at it. Come and see me, and we can explore this incredible gift of yours. 
Thanks, but I won't be doing any tests. Why not? Because I just want to get on with my life. I'm sorry, Dr. Carter. I... You don't have to apologize. You have an incredibly rare condition. And we could help you manage it, make your life easier. Think about it. You know where I am. Well, Joe and I have been keeping ourselves busy. Isn't this the most epically awesome picture? That is fantastic, Joe. Why don't you go and hang it up in your room? <laughs> so, did you speak to Mrs. Tempe? Uh, we discussed a few things, yeah. Like? Um, partners' meetings via video calls, phone based consultations, that kind of thing. See? You're making progress. It's not impossible. So. Let's see what was in that mini well because I think we deserve a drink. What? When are you going to open your eyes? I'm just trying to make the best of things. Now, putting on a brave face, do you think it's going to make the slightest bit of difference? I mean, what is it going to take for you to, to stop this madness? You know I can't. This is a hell of your making. Don't ever forget that. I'm just really sad that you dragged me and Joe into it. Something different about me. What the hell have you done? Be good to see Henry again. Mother, you look a million dollars. Just when I thought my day couldn't get any worse. I think you two lovebirds have got better things to do.